and, and, and he's got no education, he could hardly even speak the dialect in the Philippines, he, he migrated from China. And then my mom, what she does is wash clothes, and literally in the Hispanic language they call it lavandera. Okay, and I was lucky to be uh, enrolled in, in, in a Chinese school where a lot of the prestigious and rich kids are there, and got a scholarship, okay? But my dad was working so hard, and he's a poor dad, but he was programmed in order for us to eat, to live, and to be able for them to send me to school, he, they should be in a job, okay? And so what happened, one day, I was already in high school, and, and my friend, that was with me when we were kids, told me that you know a bunch of his friends was planning to visit the United States for a sightseeing tour. So I said, wow, wow. I said, do you want to come? I said, no, I can't afford the tickets. I said, no, don't worry, I'll pay your way. And he's the son of the owner of the noodle factory where my dad's working. I was so excited, I ran home, fast forward to make a little story short, my dad went off the roof and said, don't you ever ask a favor from my wife. Because in the Chinese tradition, it's a little bit of a shame when you do that. So the following day, I came back and I told my friend, look, I can't go. My dad was just, he went nuts. And he said, don't worry. My dad is your dad's boss, and I'm going to convince my dad to convince your dad to let you go. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I went home, my dad kind of like sat down with me and told me that, son, you can go. And so off we go, and after 30 days, after the sightseeing tour, my friends decided to go back home, and I decided to stay. There's two factors that made my decision. Number one, if I were to go home, I could never buy a ticket again. My dad has to work for three months without putting food on the table. That's how low his salary was. 